Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday. Here we are. We're glad to be uh, with you again after a little little sabbatical. sabbatical. Uh, we've been taking a couple weeks off. Really? With or was it a couple? No, I know we weren't one. here last week. It feels like more. Yeah. Um, just to let you guys know this one is pre-recorded. We're having to do this uh, in the morning right now. We've got a bunch of stuff going on later this afternoon, so unfortunately this isn't live per se, but let us know in the comments where you're watching from. What you're cooking, what you're eating. We still care. I'm already hungry now. Thanks. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Uh, let me just get the announcements while, while we're going. Uh, the next youth night Go is ahead. next week, Come the 23rd. On. That's 6 to 8 p.m. in the building. That's going to be the uh, Nerf War. Nerf War! And again, that's just for the youth, uh, grades 6 to 12. Um, and we will pre- be providing all of the necessary... The gear. The gear, yeah, the safety equipment to wear the glasses, uh, the Nerf weapons, um, and all that. It, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Kelsey said I can't do it, but... They're all talking about it, man. They're hurt. all jazzed about it. <laughs> It's going to be an indoor Nerf war. Indoor Nerf war. So you can just you go. go nuts in the building and That'd shoot be, one another yeah. and, and, and then have fun pick with up that. all of the little Nerf darts afterwards. That's going to be the worst Everybody's part. Everybody's getting safety gear, so don't worry about it. It'll yeah, be fun. It'll be great. Um, and with that, while we're on the youth, uh, when they begin back up in August, we are moving it to Sunday nights yes. instead of Tuesday nights. So in August, not this week, not next week, but when it comes back in August, youth nights will now be on Sunday evenings instead of Tuesday. That way we can have more of the kids yes. uh, be able to attend and get Jesus you know, poured out into them, spoken over them, spoken to them. They can start that uh, week right. Yeah, just I think that'll be great. That kind of makes, you know, like Sundays, like all of the, the, all church, the church day, if you yeah. will, and then all the kids that do sports and all that stuff in the week, you don't have to worry about you know, them missing or, or, you know, not being able to come or, or whatever, or not being able to yeah. do sports. That's a big so part of it. I think Sunday nights is a much better idea. A lot of the student athletes couldn't make it on Tuesday exactly. because they've got all the kind of stuff going on, so we're looking forward to that. So exactly. put the word out. Don't forget. I'm very, of I'm very excited, especially for... And we're introducing uh, the new youth leader. Yes. So that's, that's going to be exciting. So we'll, we'll give him the, the formal announcement before we get there, um, and I believe that will be... On the 11th, we'll, I'll bring him up. We'll bring him up on the stage and introduce him to everybody. And then August 18th will be when they start services on Sunday nights. Can I say, this has been a busy summer. Good. Right now, as we speak, we've got a missions team in Honduras. Uh, several of our young people have gone over to Honduras. They're doing great. I talked to Joe last night. They're unpacking and getting everything set up. They'll be there from Tuesday to Tuesday, so keep them in prayer. Uh, it's just been a busy summer. i I. I'm shocked. Yeah, it's 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 blowing right by. Um, but I'm definitely. It's weird to be that busy, but it's also nice that we're not doing. Um, I know, like you know, the summer slump the or summer whatever slump. with don't do church attendance and all and all that. We're we're not doing that, and just to keep our foot on the gas. Yes. Um, you know, I don't I don't want to be a church that just backs off from things mm-hmm. and wants to take you know little little rest breaks and all that. You know, we're we're supposed to be going out into all the world and preaching the gospel, and I think a big thing of that is to keep going out into all the world, preaching the gospel, you know, obviously that being missions, but also the local community, just staying, staying steady and keeping the foot on the gas. All of those things Uh, have been busy. The food pantry is doing great. Yeah. Acts 29 is doing great. Dining with Dignity is doing great. Forest just sent a lot of supplies to Jamaica. As a matter of fact, the Jamaican pastor was in uh, service last Sunday. He was here Sunday. Sunday. He left me um, the book. The book. That he he wants to uh, meet you. He did meet you, right? He did. He did. He shook my hand. Uh, he said it was obviously his, his first time there. I don't even think he mentioned that he was a pastor. He just said it was his first time and it was great. And then they came in uh, and gave me his book that he had written Fantastic. on the same subject. Mm-hmm. Uh, his was <laughs> from from the pit to the prison to the palace. Yeah. I've got it on my desk. He said it was confirmation for him, which is great because uh, it was miserable for me. But <laughs> it was another one of those. But um, 
I, I definitely plan on reading it. Um, and if you didn't like this message, you know, Stephen Furtick also preached on the life of Joseph on Sunday. So Same thing on Sunday. His was, his was actually really good, and his illustration was great. Super confirmation. That was funny. A couple um, of things. Can we mention good. the land? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we're closing on uh, next Wednesday is the final day. So uh, you keep praying. We appreciate that. Uh, a, a flurry of activity is going on at, right here at the last that includes working on leases with the farmers that are there and the house that is there and all that kind of stuff that's going on. Uh, continue to pray and continue to support. Don't forget. They remind me every week that we want to remind you, our online audience, that uh, your giving makes a difference and it matters. So if you go to our, our website or you go to our app and you would just mark something for building fund, give to that. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a tab for it. Yeah. And if you don't know how... Um, if you're in the building, you know, there's the little quick tags on the back of the chair that you just tap with your phone. That'll bring it up. Um, if you go on our website, familychurch.social, uh, and I think it's under slash give or whatever, you can see it on the website, familychurch.social. It matters. Um, and everything matters. You know, obviously, like we said, we've got the food pantry, dining with Ooh. dignity, feeding the homeless, you know, the missions group. There's a lot that goes on through this house. You know, and obviously with the land and everything coming up, it's a, it's a big deal. So it's your giving, your faithful giving Thank you. goes towards all of that. And if you're not, you know, we, we want start you to now. partner with us and, and start now. God, God will bless you. He will bless your seed. Uh, even in times of, of famine, if you will, or, you know, a down economy, none of that should stop you from Sow trusting God. something every day so that you always have a harvest in your future. Yeah. A little something. Just give a little bit. Give a little something for somebody, not just necessarily to church, but as you go along planting a seed in your life. That way you have a harvest coming pretty much every day. So Yes. To the message. To the message. The dream looks Ooh. different. The life of Joseph. When you talk about dreaming, you get right up in my, my street. That's where I love to live. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorite stories. I preached it many years ago, Joseph the Dreamer. Um, but this was a really good message. I mean, it, it might not have felt like it to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> As you deliver it, like, Lord, is anybody getting this? Yeah, it was yes, one of those they ones. Are. Yes, they are. So, but it was a great, great, great message. So, yeah, I'm already, I'm already learning. Not that uh, it's enjoyable, but we've talked about it before with whatever the other message was that I spoke that I uh, did not enjoy at all, but it seemed to touch a lot of people's yeah. lives. Um, and you know, it's, it's just weird how God does that. I mean, it's great. Obviously, it's not about me. It's all for his glory. Sure enough. Uh, but that still doesn't make it fun when you're standing up there and you're like, oh, man. Like Jesus is sitting on the front row going... Go ahead, preach it. You wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> like, but ah. it was good. My text, um, I, I used Acts 7, verses 9 to 10, because it's uh, Joseph's life is Genesis 37 to 50. Mm -hmm. And it, I was having... That's a lot. It, it was weird. I was like, man, there, it's, there's so much. There's mm -hmm. so much in there, and it's kind of like, how do you narrow it down to... Yeah just a section or one or two verses that you want to preach off of. And that's when I ended up stumbling across the verses in Acts. And I was like, this is great. That kind of gives me the launching point of, you know, here's the summary of everything he went to. Now let's yeah. break all of that down. Mm -hmm. um, Your opening question. Have you ever question? been betrayed by someone you love? Exactly. I love compelling questions. Louis Giglio was doing a master class. You might want to look at it. It's called Preaching as an Art. And that's a part of it. How... The compelling starting point, and that was a very compelling, have you ever been betrayed by someone you love? Because pretty much everybody has. And did it make you bitter or better? Yeah, because, you know, we don't want to, uh, you know, like anything, we don't, we don't want to talk about that. Um, I think we were talking about something similar at uh, practice the other night, and we were, uh, it was, I think they were talking about grief. Mm -hmm. And somebody had mentioned, you know, like how they don't, talk about their grief to anyone because they don't want people to feel sorry for them. Oh. And it's, you know, it's, I, I get it, but at the same time, it's just, that's the nature of, the downfall of human nature is that we want to, like, hide everything. Yes. But then we end up getting upset because we feel so alone and that no one gets us and no one understands us and no one's right. in it with us. They don't know what we're going through. But then at the same side, we're like, well, I don't want to tell anybody about it because it's messy yep. or, you know, it'll maybe they'll think different of me or they'll feel sorry for me or anything like that. And it's like, no, we need to connect yep. with people, yeah. you know, especially not to get like political or anything, but just 
with the division that's already in the country. And it's like there's division in literally literally everything, whether it's the color of your skin or what job you're doing, what music you like, what movies you like, what books church you, you like, like to read, what churches you, you know, what church you go to or what denominate, what, there's like a division literally for every single thing. I mean, we're divided in half right now on the screen. And we've got to talk. And we've got to talk. We've got to connect with people. God, we're called the body of Christ for a reason, to connect with people, to build one another up. When we stop talking, we descend into chaos. Exactly. That's what used to be different about our, our culture is that we had civil discourse. We had the ability to disagree, but to speak civilly with one another. And that discourse kept us from chaos. Now, we don't have that. We don't have that civility and discourse. No. And so what we do is just degenerate into fighting immediately. That's our go-to. Well, I, you're not with me, you're against me. And it's a fight. And Joseph, that's what his brothers yeah. did. And it's like that. Like we, we, can't, we can't even have the civil... We can, but nobody is because now we think, oh, if, if we disagree, we've automatically got to get offended at one another mm -hmm. and fight one another. And it's like, no, you can, you can be an adult mm -hmm. <laughs> right. and have a mutual disagreement with one another, but you can still love one another and still talk to one another without bashing one another, without attacking one another. You can disagree with someone. That doesn't automatically mean that you have to hate them or like Joseph's brothers, Joseph's throw brothers. him into a pit yeah. and you know plot to murder him. Yeah, that was, the, that was what I was about to say. His brothers, Joseph comes in and said, hey, innocently enough, hey, I had a dream. Boom, and it immediately went bad. The danger of a dream. That's why I wanted to bring that up because, you know, not everybody will get behind your dream. Right. Not everybody will agree with your dream. I think of, that brings to light just the, the church, mm -hmm. where we are now, where we're headed with mm -hmm. buying the land and everything, and we already see it now. You know, sure. we're going out to where there's farmland and, oh, are you going to keep it a farm? Are you going to keep farmland on? Or are mm -hmm. you just going to, oh, here's all the here's all the development and they're building this up. And it's like, I, I get it. On one hand, I get it. But on the same time, if you live in an area that's experiencing the kind of growth that we are, right. to me, like obviously, yes, there can be overpopulation and things like that. And okay, our roads don't have the greatest infrastructure right now to accommodate the amount of traffic. But the other alternative is you're living in a place that no one is coming to. Right. So your economy is you're dying. dying. Yeah. There's no jobs. There's no growth. I mean, you're like, oh, I want to grow up in a town with 200 people. Do you really? <laughs> Where there's, I mean, do you really? You like, okay, it might be quiet, and then you're wiggly. complaining about it being bored. Yeah. I mean, no matter what it is, you're going to find something yeah. eventually to complain about. That's mm -hmm. just, unfortunately, how we are. So you can be I'm here, kidding. and there's growth. We can reach people. We can impact people. We can bring them to Jesus. Or you can go somewhere where it's literally just dying, and there's not going to be any future for that town. Mm -hmm. And then 50 years from now, you're driving through there going, man, this used to be a great place. I wonder what happened. Now there's nobody here. Well, because nobody wants wanted to move right. there and help you grow it. That. And it's just the danger of a dream. I love seeing the place grow uh, and talk about overpopulation. Somebody will disagree with me. Don't don't write any hate mails or comments or anything. But <laughs> we are nowhere near overpopulated. No. If you get up in an airplane and look down, there's a lot of green and there's a lot of unincorporated areas around us. And we got plenty to go. And you know, I we agree with watching, your thing. We were watching something. I don't remember what it was. And I'm probably going to misquote it, but we were it was somewhere, and they were talking about a city uh, overseas. It was China or Japan. I don't remember which one. And it was something, it was like 14 or 20,000 people per city block. Mm -hmm. Like, that's overpopulated. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> like, when you Hong have Kong. that many people, yeah. that's overpopulated. Like, okay, I think our problem is, like I said, like the roads and everybody's like, oh, all the traffic. Okay, that can be fixed. That can be corrected. But to me, the growth, there's, there's something coming. I think, you know, we talk about all the time, revival's coming, and I think we're in a, a wonderful position mm -hmm. for what is coming. Well, I, I see that in the nation. You know, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention, at least mention the, the shot taken at the former president uh, and the, the, the images that you shared with me and the scriptural attachments to that about the blood on the right ear. And, yeah, and I didn't know anything that. about that. Yeah, I had forgotten about it, but it is all scripturally based and the way that it looks. I, I, just a few minutes ago before we went on, I, I sent a message to somebody and said, get ready. I truly believe that we're about to see an amazing turnaround in America that, that we've needed to see for the last several years, and it's about to happen. 
I'm that eternal optimist, but I truly believe that it's about to happen. We're going to see greater things than we've ever seen before. I think it's, I think it's, it's great. And the alternative is terrible. I mean, I think you think about the Israelites and they're chosen by God and they experience all the blessings and, and mm -hmm. his favor and his grace. And then they turn his back, their backs to him. And then God is so patient. It's like, it's just this decline and decline and decline and decline. And then when he's finally like, okay, and then here comes the judgment and then they're sent off into exile and all that. It's like, we were experiencing that, I think, as a country. And in many ways, obviously, we still are because yes. it hasn't changed exactly yet. But God is patient. You know, we've seen so many things happen and things that are demonic that have started being just widely accepted and displayed and the veil being lifted of, you know, this is the reality of, like, the, the film industry, the music industry, just how much Satan has his hand in everything. And then people just turning their backs to God, mm -hmm. and it's like we felt we've been feeling that pain. Everything's gotten worse and worse and worse and dark. But you know, I, I just watched the, the Dark Knight again the other night. So the night is darkest just just before the dawn. But God was with but him. But God was with him. And he's just because it, it looks bad doesn't mean God isn't fighting for you. See, exactly. Back to the sermon. <laughs> well, I was tying it in. I was tying it in. It looks bad. It looks bad, and it gets worse, and it gets worse. Yep. But then he eventually turns it back and the people, you know, we turn our hearts back mm -hmm. to God and, and then God like that, he was with Joseph everywhere he was. Mm -hmm. He was, he made the most of a messy situation, one of your points, and he was faithful wherever he was. I really like that because you said don't wait, just continue to be faithful. Just continue, because, you know, I see everywhere, and not just this house, but in many churches, like with volunteering and how a lot of people won't volunteer or they're waiting for the the right time to volunteer or I don't know where I should serve instead of just like, hey, let me jump in here. Anything. Where do you need a hand? You know, Anytime, let me anywhere. do it wherever or they're waiting for, you know, oh, you know, I'm going to wait until we move to the next building and we have all the nicer equipment or, you know, whatever nope. the case may be and, and, and people will wait and it's like, Joseph didn't do that. He was taken from Faithful. here and he's made a slave but while he's a slave, he puts everything he has into serving. Said. And that literally, just by him doing that and being there and serving, yeah. blesses not only him, yeah. but it blesses Potiphar's house. Literally everything he touches, mm -hmm. I mean, until Potiphar's wife goes crazy and then he's thrown into prison. But then while he's in prison, yeah. he still serves and he gets made pretty much over everything in the prison. It says, what does it say? The warden didn't pay him any mind. <laughs> I mean, God's favor was on him no matter where he was. That was one of my favorite things, even, you know, with There's the, so much to be said the about message was just about how the lower he got, the higher how the, he went. How the kingdom of God is, you know, he's taken lower and it's like, we think... Sometimes, you know, we think just losing things mm -hmm. is the, the bad part or that's like, you know, oh, we're just, I've lost this. I've lost this position. I've lost this person. I've lost my family. I've lost this. It's like, you don't realize the lower you go and the closer you get mm -hmm. to God, the higher he ends up elevating you and restoring you yeah. and, and bringing it's about your redemption and everything. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's that. It's literally that's a blessing. The kingdom is just backwards from how we think it is. But that's a hard lesson because we always want to <coughs> prosper. We always want to increase. We want to see blessing. But it's true. And prison, one of your great points, prison was preservation and preparation. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. It's always two. Pri huh? It's, it's always two sneezes. Prison was preparation and preservation. Yeah, that was... When I, I had fun with that because I was like, man, I know when I say... <laughs> Uh, that the, the, the fun part was him getting thrown into prison. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, would be like, well, how is that fun? How is that a mm -hmm. good thing? And I'm like, well, if you look at it, like I said, you know, Potiphar is the, the captain of the guard. He is pretty much the chief executioner. And here you are accused of <laughs> trying to come onto his wife and force yourself onto her. I mean, if there was any reason to be executed. That's it. That's it. Like I'm, I said about myself, if, if we had someone over at the house or, you know, the <laughs> Amazon delivery guy and I come home and Kelsey tells me that and the guy's there, you're like... You would pray for him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I would show him the, what it's like to meet Jesus and I would arrange the meeting, as they say. No. Um, but it's just that. And, you know, so he gets thrown into prison, which ends up obviously preserving his life instead of killing him. 
And I wanted to, you know, kind of highlight the point of how if Potiphar would have believed his wife, obviously the situation would have been different. But I think that obviously, obviously God's hand was on Joseph and everything he did. So he, he, he uh, changes things around and makes people react different than how they normally would have reacted. Mm -hmm. um, and so he ends up, yeah, he goes into prison and he's made lower, but in the reality, that's preserving his life and keeping him safe. What a reminder. And then it, it prepares him because he's put into prison with other political prisoners. Mm -hmm. So obviously when he's raised up and, you know, he has to, or he ends up giving, you know, Pharaoh the the idea and the wisdom for, okay, this is what you need to do. There's seven years of abundance. We need to store stuff up. And then there's seven years of famine. And then all the people are going to come to Egypt to buy it. You know, that we can just breeze past that. But it's like, you don't realize right. what that position and what that entails. He's got to know who to connect with mm -hmm. that knows about building things, uh, the right kind of ways to store food, how much food would get stored, how many people are in the land, you know, how much they eat, how much would be an idea to ration. There's so much um, logistics that goes into that. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, you know, I'm sure he learned a lot of that probably from being around the people that had been in prison with him wow. because of their position. So he gets prepared and equipped for something that normally we would have just viewed as a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. So make the best of wherever you are, you know, God wants you to do whatever you can with what you have, wherever you are. Maybe it's a good reminder for somebody, somebody watching, just think about it. You know, wherever you are, if it might not be where you want to be right now, but in everything, be faithful. Uh, continue to trust God, be faithful, do the right things, always do the right things, because you never know. At some point, God will take all of that experience. Nothing is wasted. So God can take all of that experience and turn it around and put you right where you need to be with all the tools that you need to have and... So many times you never even saw it coming. No, you always see there it. There you are. In retrospect, you know, like just that, the, the whole thing of the dream of all he sees is uh, the dream of him being in a position and his the family bowing down to him. Mm -hmm. And then the dream ends up looking different and he gets to it and he's like, oh, okay, so it wasn't about me dominating you. It was about me being able to deliver you. Yeah. And th that was one of the that things. That to me was my favorite point. Yeah? Yeah, that it wasn't about him dominating. In fact, I, I shared that later when Kelsey asked, what point from the sermon was most meaningful to you? I, I shared that one. And people gave me some private comments on that one that it was not about him dominating them but it was about him delivering them. And they were so insecure in themselves that they couldn't even see that. They responded in the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, he goes through, or well, he puts them through all of, you know, all the tests and putting the, what was it, the cup in their bag to, mm -hmm. to see how they would react and all of that. And, you know, they still have their guilty hearts, but he wasn't harboring, you know, any bitterness towards them. Mm -hmm. um, and and one of the one of the great things that I want to steal is because I didn't think about this, but he was in there for for two years, mm -hmm. and then he's finally released. And yeah. on the other sermon that was preached, he was talking about how the timing of God, how if it had been even a day sooner, maybe Joseph was still harboring, maybe he had some resentment and he would have retaliated. Mm -hmm. So if it happened too soon he would have retaliated mm -hmm. instead of restoring them. So it had to be exactly wow. at the right time that he needed it to be. And that's, I mean, what a testament to the things that we go through that, you know, like I said, mm -hmm. and we say all the time, we always want God to just instantly do it and just pull me out of this and, yeah. you know, let me escape the consequences of everything. And that's not how anything yeah. is done in life. I mean, if you start a job, you know, think about like, somewhere like McDonald's or something and you go and your whole job is just to throw fries in the thing. If you're a, a and that's a job for a high schooler, well, if you go in there at, let's just say 17 or 18 and then they throw you into a management position, you're gonna have right. no idea what to do. Yeah. And then you're gonna have the whole power trip because now you're insecure and immature and you're over all these other people that you have to yeah. it's gonna be control and, and you know take care of and, and, and delegate and all that. It's like, no, you, you have to have things in the right seasons and build up to what the ultimate yeah. goal is. Mm -hmm. 
One of my favorite questions that you ask, I wrote it down, what do I need to do in this season of my life? Yeah, and, and that was actually um, the post that Kelsey had made earlier about um, not asking, I forget how she said it, but not asking, like, why is this happening to me, but, you know, what am I here for? What is my purpose? To be more focused on the purpose than the pettiness or anything yeah. else that is going on. You know, that's such a man. You could preach that game changer mindset when you think about. It. And I, I wish maybe I need to dig into that some other time on a sermon. But just changing that mindset of you know why is this happening to me? This is a terrible situation. My life's falling apart, and it's like. Instead of why is it happening to you, what can I learn from this? Yeah. What is the ultimate purpose in this? It's obviously not meant to kill me because if it was meant to kill me, I would already be dead. I Amen. wouldn't still be here breathing. Mm -hmm. So what am I supposed to learn out of this? What do I need to take away from this? And if we stop looking at life through the lens of all the negativity and how can we turn a positive out of this, what can we take out of this no matter how dark of the situation there's always some little light yep. in the tunnel. And if you focus more on that, uh -huh. man, how much different you're thinking. I just went to see Mike Marigliano in the hospital. Um, and him, since the beginning of the year, has just had one setback after another. I walked in his room. He's laying in bed. His legs are elevated. They're, he's very swollen. Uh, feeling bad. But he said, you know, I, I'm starting to ask myself, what is it that I'm supposed to learn? And I said, those, that's the right question. What is it that I'm supposed to learn in this season of my life? Not why is this happening, woe is me, all the, but what am I supposed to be learning? You'll come out of that thing a whole lot stronger than you went into it. The dream will look different than you thought. What do I need to be doing in this season of my life? Yeah, that's, I wanted to, I think that was one of my big points, and I wish I kind of would have driven it home a little bit different, but just the thing of, of serving, Mm -hmm. of and not even just you know about getting people to volunteer in church but just serving where you are mm -hmm. serving other people's Jesus came to serve not to be served mm -hmm. so we're supposed to have a servant's heart and a servant's mindset how can we help other people how can we build other people up and you know we always just wait for the right opportunity mm -hmm. or we're looking for this big grandiose sign and you know a billboard that's like hey this and it's like how many people come across mm -hmm. your path every day and there's just like a hint of a pool, of a, a hint of something in your gut that you're like, I need to do something here, but then we don't act on it because we don't, mm -hmm. I don't know, we're too scared or whatever. And it's like, we have so many opportunities to serve other people in some capacity, you know, not necessarily just handing out money, but mm -hmm. giving them a word of encouragement or motivation or, or helping them out at work or school with a project or whatever their need may be. There's something that we can do to help out all of these people that come across our yeah. path every day. And, you know, you just look at Joseph and how blessed he was simply because he was serving God and serving people. Yeah. Two questions back to back that you ask yourself in times like that. Is this it or this is it? The same three word letters or words, but turned in a different way. What was that all about? Is this it or this is it? Well, yeah, because you look at, like with the dream, and Joseph is given a dream, mm -hmm. and then it was, well, he was shown the dream at uh, 17, and it's not until, I think, 20 years later that he even sees the dream. So he's given a dream at 17, and then it's, he's 37, I think, when the dream is realized. That's a long wow. time yeah. to wait. I mean, it was... 20 years. It, it was, you know, so he's going through all of the hardships. You know, imagine you're, you're given this purpose and you're given this dream and you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then as soon as you go <laughs> tell somebody about it, they try to kill you. And then instead of killing you, you get thrown into slavery. And now you're like, well, this is terrible. I didn't think this was going to happen. How am I supposed to get to what, you know, God just told me about? Oh, and then you get sold into a different slavery. Okay, well, worse. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, you're like, oh, it can't get any worse than this. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I guess I'll just do what I can here. Hopefully my dream still comes to pass. Oh, here comes his crazy wife. And now you're thrown into prison. I mean, like you imagine at some point you're like, come on, was the dream real? Like, yeah. is this it? Yeah. You know, is it what it, what was going on? And then you finally get to the point that you're raised up and then your family comes and there there's your dream yeah, and are. you're like, Oh, is is this it? 
Yeah. Is this it? My dream, I thought, this was something it. completely different. And you're like, is, is this really it? Is this how it's supposed to be? Yeah. And then he flipped, you know, I, I flipped it because he's like, oh, th- this is it. This is how it's supposed to be. It wasn't about, to bring it back, it wasn't about dominating. It was about delivering. Yeah. What a moment. I mean, what a moment for him. Yeah. When uh, that satisfaction of, oh, wow, this, this is real. But then the moment for his brothers of the, the, oh, no. And, <laughs> oh, no. And then, then the other moment of the restoration and reconciliation of all of them, the goodness of God, how it all just ties together, and it comes together at that, that moment. Took over 20 years before all that could happen. So a lot, that's a long time. A lot that's goes a long on. You said time. there is a reason it's taking longer than you thought. I was just about to dive in on that. That's a good thing. Um, like that, and the way that you know, I, I had given the, I think the real quick highlight of everything of how mm-hmm. God promised Abraham the several things that he promised, and then you see the fulfillment of that um, section of being a blessing to other nations through Joseph. But you know that Jesus supposed to, is supposed to come through the line of Abraham, but now there's only so few of them, mm-hmm. and now there's a famine in the land. So that entire line is threatened. Mm-hmm. And then Joseph's in this position, and he can deliver them. Oh, well, they're not supposed to marry outside of you know, that to keep the, the uh, bloodline clean and everything and not you know, fall away into the false gods or whatever. So here they are in Egypt, and then he uses the Egyptians, uh, I guess, racism against mm-hmm. them and kind of, I don't want to say tricks, but I don't really have another word. He kind of tricks them into, oh, well, you know, since you don't like shepherds, let's put them over here in Goshen, you know, and they can have their own area. And then they multiply into, you know, 400 years later, like, yeah, they're enslaved by Egypt, but there's now millions of them that Moses ends up bringing out. And it's like, there's a reason it takes longer. He had to go through all of that to prepare him to be in the place where he could not only provide for them, but to have the heart change necessary that he wouldn't retaliate at them. I mean, you think about it. If you're a teenager and then your brothers try to kill you, and let's just say two years later, you're in the position and they're bowing down, you'd be like, oh, okay, go. let's go. Yeah, who's Look looking? Look what the who's, Lord yeah. has done. Exactly. Nope, but he has to go through all of that, mm-hmm. which could have broken him, but instead it built him up to have a humble heart and to know that God had a purpose through him. Mm-hmm. And his whole purpose was to, to preserve their line, to preserve the promise, to preserve you know, the, the blessing that we finally see through Jesus. Mm-hmm. It has so many applications. Um, the story of Joseph and all that. But the, to me, the most important are to trust the process. The process is just as important. The process included going to prison and everything else that he had to go through. So for us, me included, you know, as you're going through it, just trust God. Trust the process. Be patient. Be faithful. Keep your hand to the plow. Don't bemoan your situation. Uh, just be thankful and be blessed and just trust God to get you from here to where he wants you to be. I think that's the, if there's, if there's one driving home point that we could, you know, bring into fruition is, you know, yes, trust the process, but I don't know, my mind, I just keep going back to that, that flipping the mindset of, why is this happening? Why is this part of the process? You know, because we always think of the negative. This is terrible. Why is this happening? What is going on? Why is my life falling apart? And it's like, if we would just flip it, what can I learn from this? What can I take away from this to be a better person? What can I take away from this to help somebody else out who's sure. going through a similar situation? Mm-hmm. Instead of just sitting down in a mess and being like, oh, like you said, woe is me, this is terrible, my life's falling apart, you know, this always happens to me, why is this so bad, I, you know, I'm tired of being broke, blah, 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 everything's terrible, I hate my life, it's like, if you would just flip it, yeah. what can I take away from this, what can I do different, what can I do here with the hand that I've been dealt mm-hmm. so that when someone else comes along, yeah. I can help them. And it sounds like a Christian cliche. Oh, here comes the preacher. Just trust God. Yeah. Your sermon a few weeks ago, just trust in the Lord. Well, it's true and it's right. And at my age, I've seen it so many times that it can be bad. I mean, it can be so bad. You know, at one time at the church, we got down to the point where we couldn't pay our light bill. 
um, it was rough. And, you know, you just go, okay, God, <laughs> we're, you know, we, you, I know you <laughs> said do this, so we're just going to keep going. And it, it works out. And then you finally get to a place where you're just like, wow, so blessed. So if you're it's dealing with that right now, that just good. keep going. It sounds like a cliche, but just keep going. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't take the wrong choices. Keep going. And I think a lot of people, the misconception of that is when you say, oh, just keep going, just trust God, they think that, that we believe that it's just easy. Oh, just trust God. Nobody said trusting God was no. easy. Nobody said following God was easy. Right. But that's the point of, of flipping that mindset. You know, what, what, what does God want me to learn from this? What does God want me to see in this? How does he want to build me through this? How does he want to change my, my character and to make me better through this? Instead of yeah. just getting bitter from a situation, yeah. how can that be used to make you better? And how can I glorify God in this? I don't know if you saw it or not, but um, our friend, Clay Murphy, uh, is running for a commission here in town. Well, they came with attack pieces on him. Constantly. My boy, I've known him since 1978. He and I were friends in college, so we've grown up together. A man with integrity like none that I know. They came with these attack pieces. I don't know if you saw the video, but he went to the county commission and, and made a statement. No, I haven't seen that yet. Bro, I to find it. <laughs> it was, it's, I shared it on my page, I think. It, just such a powerful statement. And he included in that, that because of my faith, God wants me to love you. He wants me to pray for you. He wants me to forgive you. So he said, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. And I thought, that is a good way to glorify God. When you want to retaliate, you just glorify God and give him, give him the whole situation. He can do it better than you can. Hey, the sharpest knife is one that doesn't get used. Right? <laughs> so when you, when you want to cut down your enemies, when you want to cut down the people that have been stabbing you in the back, when you want to cut down all. the people that have been slandering your name, when you want to cut everybody down that's cut you off in traffic, when you want to cut people down that have been hurting you and coming against you, keep, keep the greatest there. thing that you can do is not do it. Yes. And, and love them like Jesus loved them. I mean, while he's getting nailed to the cross, he's sitting there saying, Father, forgive them. And that, that would cut so much deeper can I than you God? doing anything wow. to them. If you just love them and pray for them, no matter who it is, no matter how bad the situation is, if you just take the example of Jesus and live that out, that is... It's a weird way to say it, but to me, that it's it's such a sharper knife yeah, true. than anything. You know, you turning them and around and stabbing them in the back, all that's going to do is make them say, "Look, see, I told you they were that type of person. I knew what they were. They're not really a Christian. They're you know they're not following Jesus. Look, they're all the same. All those Christians are all the same. Yep. They're just like and it's like nope. If you just hold your tongue, I was proud of him, and stop and just live like Jesus yep. and like that because of my faith." I'll love you. I'll pray for you. Mm -hmm. That would cut so much deeper because, I mean, you know, if, if somebody's hating on you and they're angry with you and you just respond in love, yeah. they might get more mad because you're not reacting the way that you want or they want you to react. But eventually they're going to feel stupid because they're sitting here screaming at you and you're just like, okay, yeah, well, I love you anyways. Mm -hmm. And that eventually melts their heart and will humble them, or it will harden their heart. And you know, but either way, powerful. It reveals more about your character than theirs. At the end of the sermon, I, I stood up and I asked how many people in the building were dreamers. I don't know if you were able to see from wherever you were. No, I was up here. I couldn't. Hands see. went everywhere, all over the building. Hands go up. Every person who's a dreamer needed to hear that and the challenges that come along with being a dreamer. That it's not going to look like you thought. It's not going to play out like you thought. The closest distance between these two points is not going to be a straight line. It's going to be squiggly and ups and downs and rivers and valleys. And it's going to be all of that. But the process. The process. You trust God, you're going to get there. So good sermon, good word. If you haven't seen it, go find it and search it out. It's on our YouTube pages. And TikTok, have y'all put it on TikTok, TikTok yet? Uh, well, no, the, the full sermons go on YouTube. TikTok, uh, I think right now, just gets our, our reels and our clips. Did you do it live um, last week? She's Yeah, we streamed it off of her phone, um, and we're, I'm, we're trying to figure out how you can stream the actual, you know, video to TikTok. It's Come a little on. weird process, but mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out the process. So, But for those who've heard her. it, uh, we reached 10,000 subscribers on TikTok, and that gives you the yeah. opportunity to go live. And in that live service that you did last Sunday, right at 700 people 
who were not in that this was building. the most watched platform for Sunday out of all the ones that we streamed to. Right at 700 people were able to watch that sermon live from St. Augustine, Florida. So. Yeah, and that was the first time doing it on a cell phone. So, Did you God have the comments moving. on or off? She has them on. Ooh. <laughs> Don't read the comments. They, well, hey, that's <laughs> unfortunately the nature of the game and the algorithm, the algorithm is you've got to have the comments on. Praise uh, the Lord. The... the Sharing it and stuff is one thing, but the oh, algorithm is all based on engagement. engagement so yeah. you have to have engagement. So engage. So engage. Sunday's coming. You ready? Sunday's coming. You're I'm up not, to bat. I'm not even singing this week. You're not? Well, you will be, but you're not leading. I'm excited about that. I don't have to lead or don't get to lead a song, but I get to back them up and sing with them. Uh, Sunday, I've asked for the opportunity to go to bat. So this Sunday, I'm going to be speaking uh, on 1 Kings 17. Take a look at it. Read it. Tell me what you think. Show up Sunday when the brook dries up. Should when be a good day. the brook day. dries up. Yes. So Sunday morning, come early. We start at 10. Come in the house. Come early. Uh, Please. And get, and get a seat. Get a good seat. Sit up front because it's, it's easier to hear and it's closer to the Lord. Invite somebody. <laughs> send it along. Spread the word. Uh, the summer, we're coming to the end of the summer. Uh, our building is still full. We need to make some decisions about what we're going to do next, but we're working on it. Our children's departments are filling up classrooms back there so we're excited about it get involved participate thank you for all that you're doing pray for us continue to pray about the land if you are a, a faithful with what we're doing here and you'd like to start contributing to us do that it's a good thing to get involved in plant some seed yes exactly all with right. that we'll see you enjoy the rest of your week god bless see you next time Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.